Hey, Dylan. Hey, Matt. Hey, man. Look, behind the scenes, real quick. Oh, my God, dude. We got to hang out this past weekend. Oh, my weekend. God. It was amazing. I got to meet some awesome people. Horror movie night family, of course. Yeah. The Jersey Ghoul family who the, you already knew. Yes, of course. And then and I they, tossed you into the deep end of oh the Camp Nightmare God. guys. And I just want to give a shout out to the Camp Nightmare guys. Uh, JB and, and Jordan are absolutely phenomenal people. You almost fought JB on stage I did. at one point. <laughs> I did, but in the immortal mer- words of uh, Scott, hey, we were all just, uh, you know, leaning into our characters up there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It was it was just fun to like be at a show with a bunch of people. Yeah, you know what it, I mean. It like, feels like low pressure, low energy, just like shooting the shit, hanging out. Exactly. And you and I have talked in the past about our our feelings on cons. Right now, um, I'm more in line of going to to video game cons and just going as a guest, no longer working them. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe I'll 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 get back out there and 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 work at a con again. It probably won't be the Look, one. We got to do I a Christmas to. con. We oh need we need to we need to do a Christmas con soon. We really do. We really do. And they're they're popping up, man. Like it's 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 wild that we haven't done one yet. Yeah. So I was talking to Chris and Melissa um on sat the Saturday of the Potential con. future guests on this show exactly. we found out very quickly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um and I was talking to them. They're actually playing a show fifteen minutes from me this summer. Oh. Um yeah, they're playing Love in it. June. At a thing called Batfest. So I think it's Batfest. So as Teddy and I are leaving the convention, Teddy pulls it up and it's baseball. It's it's a baseball. Oh. It's not a convention. Right. Like it's like an opening day or it's like a I think it's like a little league celebration thing or whatever. I was gonna say it could be like a minor league baseball team. Minor league yeah. baseball teams are fucking wild. Oh dude. yeah, yeah. I yeah. love going to minor league baseball. It's crazy. It's great. <laughs> so they're doing that. They're playing Bat Fest. So as soon as I found out that, I pulled out my phone and I text Chris and I was like, Hey, I know this is a baseball thing, but I hope you wouldn't be upset if Teddy and I show up in bat onesies, <laughs> like as <laughs> as fucking like actual the the animal bats. You're like I'm very confused. What's happening? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, I would be lying if I said we didn't look up how much bat onesies would cost. And the Did only thing s- holding me back is it's in June, like it's in late June. Yeah, it'd be hot. It'd yeah, be hot for sure. Exactly. Did you see the um the TikTok that went like pseudo viral? But it's the guy on the news talking about protesting the drag brunch. And he's like, he's like, it's just dangerous in here. How are you going to have race cars just <laughs> spinning all over the place inside of somewhere where people are eating? There's I, no track. There's no rules and regulations. I <laughs> love shit like that. Like one of my favorite bits in Super Troopers is when they show up as bikers and she shows up as a like a hardcore motorcycle biker and he shows up as a cyclist. <laughs> like I fucking love that. I love that so much. So some dude, some funny jokes work, but yeah, enough of sure. our little catching up. Yes. I've got one last thing I need to ask you, Dylan, before we dive into this week's topic. Do you like genre television? Yeah. Okay, well, I've got great news for you. We are pseudo-sponsored. They're friends of ours, but I'm giving them a shout-out. Bingetown TV, part of the Geekscape Network, is your number one podcast source for all genre television. At the time that this episode's dropping, they're covering Shadow and Bone week by week. They're covering Yellow Jackets week by week. Fuck and yeah. I believe they're covering the final season of Succession week to week on their podcast. So scroll through there. They've covered a ton of great shows, including stuff like The Last of Us. Almost all of, to a certain point, all of the Marvel and Star Wars stuff. I think yeah. even their show has hit uh, a burnt out <laughs> statement. But if you're enjoying the fun banter that is Christmas 365, then maybe go ahead and check out some Bingetown TV as well. Enjoy. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Do you like to laugh? 
geek out on music, and learn all about that band or artist who had that one song back in the day, but then seemed to fall off the face of the earth? If so, you need to subscribe to One Hit Thunder. Together with an array of interesting and hilarious guests, we do a weekly dive into one-hit wonders like Eiffel 65's Blue, Crayshon's Gucci Gucci, EMF's Unbelievable, Delamitri's Roll to Me, Los Del Rio's Macarena, Musical Youth's Past the Duchy, and even Patrick Swayze's She's Like the Wind. So are you subscribed to One Hit Thunder or what? As Desiree would say, you gotta be. And as K7 would encourage, you gotta come baby come and join in on the fun of the One Hit Thunder podcast. Uh, all right, so Dylan, you sent us a link to an Aquabats Christmas album that I honestly didn't know existed until you texted me. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas too, which is not could part, it be part do? I was gonna say, could it be well. the sequel or <laughs> or in addition to? I gave this a little spin the other day. I mean, this entire EP is under 10 minutes long. Yeah, it's great. All right, you hit play on this one. And for yeah. a couple minutes, it feels like the original I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. And then MC Bat Commander's very specific dulcet tones come in and remind you, oh, no, sir. This is most certainly the Aquabats covering I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> I want a hippopotamus for Christmas too. <laughs> and honestly, man, I'll say I hate it as much as I hate the original. <laughs> but I would listen to the if you gun to my head if I had to choose one of them, I would go with the Aquabats one. Yeah, I I'll, think so. I'll take MC Bat Commander's voice over the like I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And like, I only picture Shirley Temple, like for some, yeah, like that's which all is I not who's singing it for no, sure, but at all. <laughs> but yeah, now this song. One of these days, we've got to do like our top five least favorite Christmas songs, but yeah. this one's got to be in the top three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, like that's definitely ooh, that's a great idea. We definitely need to talk about that. We might have some Christmas 365 hot takes coming up soon. But yeah, so it it is what it is. It it's is like what it is. Uh, have we talked about? Is this the first time we've talked about the Aquabats? I, I no. Is this the first time we've deep dived into something? <laughs> yes, this okay. is definitely the first because like the Aquabats rule. Like that's yeah. The end of the day. I, I mean, at the time that we're recording this, kind of one of the. I don't know if it truly went viral or if it's just that it's something that covers our interests, so it yeah. pops up a ton. But like the Kids React to YouTube channel just released Kids React to Ska Music. Oh, fuck yeah. And they were, these kids were baffled by the Aquabats super rad. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'll give it to the Aquabats, man. Their sound has changed, but they have always been who they are. The, they have changed in the sense that they dropped the ska and the horns, yeah. what, three albums in. Yeah. But, like... Barely. Like, two. Yeah. Like, one and a half, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, like, even beyond that, like, there's nothing about their songs or their attitude that has felt like it missed a beat. Yep. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, Like, a song on charge feels like it would be at home on Fury of the Aquabats, yep. and a song on Fury of the Aquabats feels like it would be at home on charge the only difference is like most of the horn parts have been replaced by synthesizer parts yeah. but otherwise it is they they found their little their little genre style that no one else can do and they have just like dug their heels into it and I'm for it I'm for it in this case it's 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 so weird it's like hey we're going to create a superhero band that plays nothing but novelty songs and we're also going to have a lot of fucking ties to the punk community. And it's yeah. great. Like, it's absolutely awesome. I love that part of their whole gimmick was like, we just want a way to get our friends into the show for free. <laughs> so if if we're superheroes, yeah. part of the show is that we have to fight monsters. And then we get a bunch of our friends in the show for free to come on stage for like two seconds and play a monster that we fight. Yep. Yep, and they and they eventually <laughs> evolved into for a short time there, kind of a phenomenon with kids. I mean, yeah, they really did. They've always, I think, they've always catered to a younger audience, obviously. Yeah, um, and even as their their 
what makes the Aquabats great is they're definitely an act that if you grew up listening to the Aquabats, you can show your kids. Like and and they're the Scott equivalent of like Weird Al Yankovic to me. Yeah, in a yeah. sense, like the, because even like I think both of them. This is going to sound wild, actually, but I would say actually that the Aquabats might be more squeaky clean than even Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah, for um, sure. Like Al dives into like some real dark, like murder and mutilation type lyrics, yeah. where it's like the Aquabat stuff is always so like surface level. Yep. Hey, everybody's having a good time. This is yeah. the, we're we're here for a party, especially I, the later stuff, like yeah. Hey Homies and stuff. It's yep. just like. Just grab your buddy and give him a big old hug. They're like the G-rated ICP in a lot of ways. <laughs> You're not wrong. I mean, as a certified Aqua Cadet, like you are not wrong at all. Um, I would say, what yeah. community aren't you a certified? I know. Member I know. Of? You know, I'm just, I'm just, I just really love fandoms and love, and I hate discourse, so I hate yeah. fandom as well. Um, so I, I love, what I love about the Aquabats is that's how their music is. And then when MC Bat Commander or any of the Aquabats honestly speak or they, they're doing interviews or they're a part of their show, they basically become the Muppets, which is because it's like, yes, the, the premise is absurd and it's, it's all catered to kids like cheeseburger rain and we're fighting monsters and stuff like that. But the lines, a lot of them contain so much dry humor and sarcasm that, like, I absolutely adore it. And I think it is a show, much like a show that we're going to talk about later on, that caters to both kids and adults, honestly. Like, I think it's a it's a perfect balance. And that's what I no, love I, about the Aquabats. I agree with that. Now, here is my question about the Aquabats Super Show, though. Yeah. That was not, in my mind, that was not nearly as successful as Yo Gabba Gabba, though. No, no, like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I mean, like they built a phenomenon with Yo Gabba Gabba yeah. that allowed them to, I feel like it allowed them to experiment with the Aquabat Super Show. But even then, I mean, as far back as what their second album, they had already written a TV show theme song. Like yep. it, it had always, I feel like it had always been the inevitable end goal that the Aquabats would get a TV show. Yeah. But I just also think it's too, it's too hard of a sell. I think the Aquabats TV show in 1996 would have been like huge at the peak of like the ska explosion. God, and people would have so like fucking cool, but, but like, <laughs> you know, I'm glad that it existed, Yes. but it, it feels, it feels like. So at the time that this comes out, literally, a week later from like a week after this episode drops um, season two of clone high comes out after like 20. Yeah. I was going to bring that up, man. Yeah. And Phil Lord, Phil Lord and Chris Miller have literally said every single step of their career has been a way to get them closer to a second season of clone high. Like that's yeah. all they've ever done. And I really do believe that like, to a certain extent, the Aquabats are in the same boat where like every single album, every single business move has been, we want an Aquabats TV show. We, we, even if we get one season to do it, we want, we want this show yeah. to happen and, and like, good for them, man. They worked their asses off. They manifested it they did. and they're clearly still doing music. Cause this was what from 2021, I believe. Yeah. So like, yeah, the show was long gone and they're still putting out albums. And dude, so I want to be honest, like they're the album or the, the single that they released around the pandemic was so fun. Um, yeah. Uh, Pajama, yeah. They have a whole Pajamazon. album, right? Pajamazon. Kooky yeah. Spooky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They released the album. Kind of towards the tail end of lockdown, I think. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, it was late 2020 at the very least. Yeah. So, but like that was that single pajamas on, which is I put my pajamas on and I go on yeah. Amazon. <laughs> I'm never going to go outside, go outside yeah. again. <laughs> and it's great because it's a ska song. Like, like yeah. they, they brought it back and they do. They periodically bring ska music well because their keyboard the player is still their sax player yeah like he was the original sax player so every once yeah. in a while if the song calls for it, we at least get a horn in there God, a little bit of a toot 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 hopping in i there. love the aquabats we need to so so <laughs> here's my proposal matt <laughs> one of my infamous proposals dude there's enough lore here aquabats podcast man look <laughs> I'll put it in the long. I'll put it in the long line of 
shows that one day I'll produce. I feel like here's here's a hot take. Yeah. I feel like we're really stretching out the lore of the Aquabats because neither one of us really wants to talk about Christmas Steve, which I think is the worst <laughs> song on this album. It's so fucking <laughs> creepy. It's so <laughs> creepy. <laughs> This song, and correct me if I'm wrong, because like I had to kind of, I'm like, I was tuning in and out the last time I listened to it. Is it about a man who lives underground named Steve? That has, sounds about what the lyrics were telling me. Now <laughs> committed a home invasion, tied these people up, and is just raiding their refrigerator <laughs> as they're it, screaming, and the song <laughs> ends. <laughs> That's pretty much it, yeah. Christmas Steve, I'm not into this one. Christmas Steve, yeah, I don't like how it's sung. You. It's just, it's creepy. It's the longest song on the album. It's so unfortunate, <laughs> man. It's so unfortunate <laughs> that it's the longest song on the album. Yeah, three. Which, for the record, everyone is about three minutes and some change. Like these yeah. songs are short, but yeah, it's a ten-minute long EP, and there's six songs. So you're a- or five, five songs. You're I, averaging five two songs. minutes. Yeah, five songs. So you're averaging two minutes a song, and this song is definitely the outlier where it takes over that that uh, that mean there. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That's we've said what we can about. Christmas yeah, I, we're moving now. Forward let's talk Christmas about the shortest song on the album that fucking rules, oh, it which is "Christmas Is Awesome." <laughs> Christmas is awesome. Christmas is right. Time to remember all the good. So, like this song took me back to the Real Big Fish Christmas EP, where like yes. I think overall. You and I weren't fans of, but there were two fucking songs on that. The originals TV. were great. Yeah, yeah. the Sk- Skank for Christmas, Skank for Christmas, and whatever you celebrate are both yeah. fantastic songs. And that's what this song took me back to. I was like, "This is fucking great. This is yeah. definitely getting added to the playlist." The Christmas yeah. is awesome. Honestly, uh, in the distant future, if you and 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 Chris Fafalius ever have a falling out. And you're like, no, nah, man, fuck punchline. That's not going to be our theme song anymore. We need to get in touch with MC Bat Commander because I think Christmas is awesome should be our theme. That, that I mean, that, that sums happen. us up. Yeah, no, I mean, it really it really gets straight to the point of the matter. Uh, but it is it is also very short. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just, hey, man, Christmas is awesome. I want to talk about what my favorite song on this album was, even though it is the least Christmassy song on the yeah. album, which is them covering Holiday Road, which is just a great song. It's a great song. I found out long ago. Curious why they didn't just cover the Christmas Vacation theme song yeah. by the same artist, but I mean, there's... I have not heard a bad version of this song. No. As long as you get the like holiday rule, and that's and that's basically like, every Aquabat song. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Like they it, do that shit in every song. So the fact that this awesome. took twenty one years or whatever for them to get around to is actually shocking. And it's it's <laughs> it's definitely the song on the the EP that sounds most like early Aquabats. Yes, um, it's that upstrum. Uh, you can definitely skank around to this jam. It's a it's a it's a fantastic cover all around, and I just I like the original song. I like the Aquabats, and my fingers are crossed that we get a uh, Christmas Vacation cover in the near future. Because I, I re- look, Holiday Road is definitely the better song. Oh yeah, and and my feelings of the movie Christmas Vacation I think have like started to go downward over the years, and we'll get into that when we eventually do an episode on that movie. But, That's definitely a December episode. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's but, no way we but, can do that before then. 
But I think the song Christmas Vacation is a fucking bop. Like, it's it's a really... It's that time. Christmas time is here. Like, you're fucking... Yeah, dude, strap in, man. Christmas time is here. Getting ready for Christmas Vacation. Okay, I'm 100% for it, man. That song is better than the movie. Like, a thousand percent. Yeah. And I think that's a hot take. (laughs) <laughs> well no i mean here's this is the this is the teaser for whenever we get to that yeah just the older i get like i've said before i i can't do the mean spirit at christmas movies anymore and like yeah. that movie's fucking mean that movie like it's a mean really it's mean. a mean movie um and then we end this lovely ep uh you know i'll, I'll give this ep a solid two and a half out of five because the last half i think the th- the three closing tracks are yeah. fine I think um, they Santa are. Claus party. Come on, everybody, to Santa Claus's party. You may be sure and, and I should have like, ended with Holiday Road, honestly. Yeah, I would. I would switch the Holiday Road and Santa Claus party because Santa Claus party sounds like they were like, all right, now that we got the fucking old heads satisfied with Holiday Road and that fucking ska jam. Let's bring out all the Yo Gabba Gabba monsters, and we're gonna have a fucking <laughs> dance party, which I'm all for. Like, rock on with your bad self. But I like more the Holiday Road cover version of the Aquabats. But I like both. I liked them both. So I'm yeah. with you, man. The first two songs, I'm I'm good on. I never yeah. ever need to hear I want a hippopotamus <laughs> for Christmas again. Like, whether it's this version, whether it's the original. And Christmas Steve, I I think that's ruined like the original song for me. Yeah. Christmas Eve will. And I'm like, no, it's always gonna be Christmas Steve in my head now. And <sighs> such such a ra- as MC as we back, Commander. literally like right off the bat of me being like, they're like the G-rated Weird Al. This is like a straight up Weird Al type. Song. Oh yeah. Like Christmas Steve is like the hey, let's take something wholesome and make it horrifying. Um, this is so, this literally so thank you. and and going back to you saying this is the G-rated ICP as well. Like this is right out of uh, I think Red Christmas or, yeah. or when he's like uh, oh, yeah. I'm having a dead Christmas. Yes. Like yeah, it's it's 100% out of that <laughs> same bag. But I mean MC Back Commander man, I don't know really what else to say did you know he was in an episode of uh married with children yes he he was an actor for a, yeah. for a hot minute uh he was in pretty in pink and gleaming the cube Ooh, yeah. uh i picked up gleaming the cube from vhsps last week well keep an eye <laughs> keep an eye out and see if you can find a little baby bat commander Oh, and I hope he's got the mustache. He's, he's yeah. drawn in a Pretty in Pink. His character has a name in Gleaming the Cube. In Pretty in Pink, he is Boy in the Record Store. So, oh, and I fucking love me some Pretty in Pink. So I'll Pretty in Pink on. is fantastic. Which he also would, has credits for Punk Rock Holocaust too. Um, I own both as punk MC rock. Bat Commander. Are you so, familiar with the Punk Rock Holocaust? I have movies? the first one. Yeah. I I saw enough. I they're didn't both go. awful, but guess <laughs> I own them both. So. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they're so bad. Uh, so the Punk Rock Holocaust movies are for people that don't know this are basically they filmed both of these movies on the warp tour and it is it's one of the yep. earlier warp tours like 2000 or 99 or something like that and what it is is basically they just cut live band footage and in between each like live song they're creating this really bad horror movie amongst the bands and and really bad actors and it re- like it is definitely of its time. The negative is, yeah, it's like what the hell is this shit? Yeah. Like Lloyd Kaufman it's plays like a good. record exec. Yeah. You find out that Kevin Lyman can't act to save his fucking life in what? those movies. <laughs> um, but but you on the do flip get, side, you, you know get some fun concert oh, yeah. footage, and you yeah, know they like, had a fucking blast, Dylan. I want you for Christmas. Oh, I want you for Christmas too. Whoa. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. Now we won't stop till the big ball drops on New Year's. Happy, happy holiday, have a great, great, great holiday, have a merry, 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 happy holiday.
You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 